Stay far away from it. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I am your humble narrator, and welcome back to another Bundle Banter. Sorry it's been just a minute, but Humble has come back with the Humble Sierra the Third Bundle. I have been in quite a mood lately, which is why I haven't been uploading, and this bundle has not done anything to uh, improve my mood. So, I will be bashing quite a few things, quite a few nostalgic classics in here that I take a poop on, so if you're sensitive, please click away now. <laughs> Let's go ahead and jump into the games, see what we got in the first tier. Gabriel Knight 3, Blood of the Sacred, Blood of the Damned, Velocity 2X, Time Shift, and the Police Quest Collection. In the Beat the Average tier, we've got The Beast Within, a Gabriel Knight mystery, Phantasmagoria 2, A Puzzle of Flesh, Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic Obscura, Caesar 4, Quest for Glory 1 through 5, and Shiftlings. In the Toppest tier, we've got King's Quest Season Pass, King's Quest Collection, Gabriel Knight, Sins of the Father, Geometry Wars Dimensions Evolved, Space Quest Collection, Phantasmagoria, and Caesar 3. This is quite a lot of games. I'm going to go over each of them quite briefly <laughs> to keep the length of this video down. So if I missed something, I do apologize, but you can let me know in the comments. With that said, let's jump into the games with Gabriel Knight 3, Blood of the Sacred, Blood of the Damned. Quite a title. A classic point and click that is really starting to show its age. The banter of the two main characters, Gabriel and Grace, managed to make this playable but I think for most, it's just going to be a nostalgia trip. The story is rather predictable, and the inventory puzzles are logical, but still liable to drive me up a freaking wall. If that's your cup of tea, that's great, but it certainly isn't for me. Velocity 2X. This title looks a lot better than it really is. Velocity 2X is comprised of two parts. Most levels are going to be top-down bullet hell shoot 'em ups while precious few others are shooter platformers. The game went through development hell, and it has the blemishes to show for it. You'll need to learn so many different things with so many different inputs. Shift to shoot, spacebar to boost, create a checkpoint with control, teleport through objects with eight, explore the branching pathways in a game that only moves one way. So you have to use those checkpoint teleports, but you have to put like an input to teleport back to them. Uh, it's just, it's too much. And that's just the ship levels. <laughs> I don't have the patience for this one either, to be quite honest. Time Shift. Well, this game doesn't exactly blow my socks off either, but compared to the other games we've seen so far, it is indeed a breath of fresh air. Time Shift is a relatively easy little corridor shooter with graphics that actually manage to hold up well enough if you apply the proper patches. Sierra doesn't really seem to give a damn about updating their game so that they run on modern hardware. The story is dumb, the game is short, it still might be worth a trip through though. Police Quest Collection. Another nostalgia trip that holds almost no appeal for me. The story is interesting enough and features some degree of realism, but the truth is that like most of these Sierra games, they simply just don't hold up when you compare them to today's gaming selections. I'll give it respect for pioneering a genre in gaming, but there's just so much here that has since been improved upon that you'll likely find it a cumbersome slog. Not to mention, it's missing some pretty crucial maps and documentation that were usually included with the case, and now you'll inevitably need to look those up online. Ugh. The Beast Within, a Gabriel Knight mystery. Gabriel and Grace return, this time using their point-and-click powers to hunt down werewolves. The story's a bit stronger than the aforementioned Gabriel Knight 3, but it isn't enough to make me power through the ancient graphics and inventory puzzles. It does feature some real-world locations and a lot of werewolf mythology, which is pretty sweet, but I just can't get into it. Phantasmagoria 2, A Puzzle of Flesh. I'm really not quite sure how to peg Phantasmagoria 2. The game itself is terrible, with bad acting, a ridiculous plot, and puzzles that don't make a lick of sense. Part of me wants to believe that they knew what they were doing and just kind of ran with it, but the track record on these games kind of says otherwise. If you're looking for a campy romp with extra cheese, then Phantasmagoria 2 might please. Heh, <laughs> that rhymes. <laughs> At the very least, it appears to launch and fit on widescreen without much issue, which can't be said for a lot of these titles. 
Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic Obscura. High fantasy combat RPG is definitely more my speed. And I could totally get into this title if it weren't for the excess of hoops that you'll need to jump through to even get it running. Install the unofficial patch, then grab some high-res textures, then open the EXE in windowed mode as an administrator, and then you can finally start to play. But why would you do all of this if there are more competent combat RPGs that are readily available? Age of Decadence is on Fanatical right now. Go get that and forget about this one, for God's sake. Caesar 4! When Caesar made the leap from 2D into 3D, they had to scale back a lot of the features. Which is why Caesar 4 sits below Caesar 3 in the tier list. It's not a terrible game, but it's basically just a direct port of Caesar 3, except it's taken into the third dimension and downscaled quite a bit to compensate for that. There's no reason for a city builder sim to exist in 3D, especially when it means the maps end up so small. Oh, did I mention that it has trouble at startup because it hasn't been updated for modern software? But you probably guessed that by now, didn't you? Quest for Glory 1 through 5, hey! There's the nostalgia trip for me. Took long enough. My mind absolutely swims with all of the grand adventures I had in Quest for Glory as a little lad. The mighty sword of the warrior, the cunning tricks of the thief, the unmatched intellect of the wizard. Unfortunately, time is cruel. And nostalgia is the only reason for me to even go partially soft on this particular series. In reality, it feels like they downloaded some DOSBox software and slapped a launcher on it. If I were really eager to go back to the series, I could do so for free. I haven't, because I'd like to leave those memories unspoiled. Shiftlings! This is probably the best game in the entire bundle, and quite frankly the only one that I'd even consider paying for. Shiftlings is a puzzle platformer that features two aliens attached with a hose. One is always fat, the other is always skinny. You can press a button to swap them. The controls are simple, and the puzzles are easy enough to understand when compared with some of the other obscure nonsense in the other games listed here. If you enjoy co-op, puzzles, smooth gameplay, and quirky humor, then snatch Shiftlings, but probably not from this bundle. King's Quest Season Pass If you aren't sure whether you like the King's Quest series, you can play Chapter 1 for free. This Season Pass includes Chapters 2 through 5. The art style is leagues ahead of most of the other offerings in this bundle, and the voicing is really awesome as well, but it is another point and click with puzzles that don't generally offer a clear solution. More trial and error, but at least the carrot on a stick is a bit juicier here than with most other titles in this bundle. King's Quest Collection, hey! They actually did update this one to run on modern hardware. The King's Quest games are pretty decent, a bit of a throwback to the golden age of Sierra, an age which will never come back around by the looks of things here. <laughs> King's Quest helped me a lot with spelling and developing my love of fantasy when I was a young lad, and you might be surprised to learn how well entries 5, 6, and 7 actually hold up today. It might be worth revisiting if the nostalgia factor's there for you, but something tells me that the patience I had as a child is now gone, and I probably wouldn't end up getting very far. Gabriel Knight, Sins of the Faller, here it is! The pinnacle of the Gabriel Knight games, which is actually the first entry, which is weird, but whatever. The characters are pretty well developed, they do have their flaws, but somehow you manage to love them despite all the flaws. The story is serviceable, even if they did feel the need to cram in a cheesy romance plot. The real problem that I have with Sin of the Father's inclusions in this bundle is, like, why didn't they give us the fucking 20th anniversary edition? Oh, because it isn't by Sierra. What a fucking pile of shit. Why would you play this version at all, ever, when the updated version is just sitting right there? God damn it, Humble. Geometry Wars 3 Dimensions Evolved. A fairly nice bullet hell twin stick shooter. Along with Shiftlings, I might actually consider paying money for this title. It was one of the first shooters to make use of 3D arenas in such a way, and it did it while oozing style. There's still a, quite a following for Geometry Wars 3, and that's for good reason, I'd say. It's fairly simple, but what it does, it does extremely well. Space Quest Collection. Ugh. I'm just about at the end of my rope here. Space Quest is yet another set of games that fails to work right out of the box. The launcher fails to launch any of the games, so you'll need to go through DOS in order to do so. Wow. Is that nostalgia factor kicking in for you yet? If you manage to get it running, there are so many puzzles in here that just make no freaking sense, have no hints, it's just guessing. 
You'll be fumbling around in the dark for the right answer until you finally stumble into it. Oh boy, how's that for a sense of accomplishment? Ugh. Phantasmagoria, one of the first adult games to find success in the market. But the years have not been so kind to Phantasmagoria. The technical and design choices that litter this game make it feel so clunky that it's almost unplayable. If you like taking a trip into the past, it might be worth revisiting, because who doesn't miss those gorgeous FMV cutscenes, am I right? Yeah, another game that I won't regret not having in my Steam library. Caesar 3! Now, here is the third and final game that holds up in this bundle as far as I'm concerned. I've mentioned the magic of simulator games and how they just never seem to age, and Caesar 3 is the prime example of that. It still manages to neglect a lot of quality of life changes that can be found in more modern titles, but it isn't a bad game by any means. Fiddle with trade and commerce, send gifts to please Caesar, and have fun building your city in this fairly relaxing real-time strategy and city building sim title. So what do I think of the Sierra the Third bundle? Uh, I don't. <laughs> I think it be, should be swept under the rug and never looked at again. There are so many games in this bundle, and the number of ones that are actually playable, halfway quality, I can count on one hand. That's friggin' pathetic. Most of them are broken right out of the box, you gotta patch them or go through DOS, which is just freaking ridiculous. I hate it, I absolutely hate it. Anybody who spent money on this, I'm so sorry, my heart goes out to you. <laughs> like, the price is low, but... How much are you actually going to pay for somebody else's trash, you know what I mean? If you wanted to list your games on Steam, at least make sure that they're fucking functional. Ugh, I get so frustrated. They're like, yeah, buy our games, buy our games, there's a bundle of all our games, and half of them don't even work properly. I, I can't stand it. Velocity and Time Shift are decent enough from the first tier. Second tier, probably Shiftlings. Uh, Quest for Glory also kind of gets me a little bit. Phantasmagoria 2 is really not that bad if you can uh, set aside the cheese. <laughs> and then the King's Quest stuff is it's kind of okay if you like point and clicks. The art style is well done. Geometry Wars Dimensions, Caesar 3, those are all kind of nice. But just everything else has such deep set problems that there's no way, there's no way that I would recommend anybody pay money for this bundle. Fucking ridiculous. I was out of commission for a couple of days because of a cold. I was hoping to come back and find some amazing bundles that would blow my socks off. And I... I did not, <laughs> to say the least. Fanatical's got a good one going, but we'll cover that within another day or two. Uh, there's also another Humble Bundle thing, which I haven't taken a look at quite yet, so we will do that tomorrow. And I'm so glad to be back. Thank you guys for sticking with the Dayton Do. I hope you'll join the Discord. Check out that Jurassic World Evolution giveaway. It's going for the next week, so you can interact with the giveaway bot. That'll be pretty cool. Also, check out the links to Twitter and Patreon. And a big shout out to Damon Darkstar and Nika the Legend for supporting us on Patreon currently. I hope you will like, comment, and or subscribe on this video. Maybe share it around. Uh, I hope I didn't go too hard on Sierra, but then again, fuck them, you know? <laughs> You can't bother to patch your games? Guess what? I can't bother not to shit on you too hard. Anyways. <laughs> this has been Bundle Banter, the humble Sierra the Third bundle. Stay far away from it. <laughs> I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. I shall see you in the next one. And until then, friends. Bye-bye.